Let's read from Isaiah 48, from verse 17 to verse 19. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains. Their name will never be cut off nor destroyed for, from before me. And I told them to give you some emphasis there. I don't know if you've read it, read it like this before and if you've noticed these words that I alighted. He said, this is what the Lord says. And it's, it's like God was trying to say, in the scheme of things, you've got to know who you are. You've got to know who I am. I am your redeemer. Hello? I am your redeemer. See, when the two of us are talking, we are not colleagues. Amen? I am your redeemer. I bought you at a price. I paid for you. Why would your redeemer be talking and you will not pay attention. <laughs> he said, I am the Lord your God. Who teaches you what is best for you. When I am talking, you shouldn't have an opinion. Because what I teach is what is best for you. He said, I direct you in the way that you should go. You know, our generation thinks we have free will. And we can do what we like. You need to understand that, look, to every issue, there is the right way, there is the wrong way, and there is the way. It is right or wrong when human beings are talking. It is the way when God is talking. And it is the way that you should go. Every other way is a trap. Now look at what he said. He said, if only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace, your righteousness, your descendants. Hello? Listening to me will affect your peace. The word peace is shalom. Essentially, it means nothing missing, nothing broken. Your peace, your righteousness, your descendants. Your peace, your righteousness, your descendants are affected not by your effort, but by your ability to listen to me. You know, on Wednesday we talked about God speaks. We, we started to talk about how that God speaks and we can hear from God. You may want to get the message, but that's not what I'm talking about this morning. Would you look for, your, for, for somebody around you, uh, the most polite neighbor you can find? Because it may be a bit offensive what you're about to tell that person. Tell that person for me this morning, it's not about you. Yeah, just before you get into trouble, look for another neighbor. Now say it nicely to the person, be nice. Tell that person, it's really not about you. It's not about you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, steer these people like you steered me. Invade their thoughts like you did mine. Transform, Lord, their experience like you did with me. Take over my faculties. Use them for your glory this morning. Father, let your word speak to, this, to the situation and the circumstance of our lives. Transform us from within. Change us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. You know, so Wednesday night, we, we, we talked so much about the value of the voice of God. Okay? How that when God was saying to Joshua... This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. He was not reading it from a book. How that the written word is important, but along with the written word, we must be able to hear the voice of God. Somebody say the voice of God. The voice of God. How that Joseph would have not married Mary and he would have been right based on what was written. How that Abraham would have killed Isaac and it would have been right to kill Isaac because he heard, he heard God. And we said on Wednesday, I heard God is not as important as I hear God. Because it's not about what he said, it's about what he is saying. 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Another way of saying that is that faith comes by the proceeding word of God, by the present continuous word of God. So I was overwhelmed because, you see, I looked at my life, how far I've come, how peaceful my life has been, the, the victories I've recorded just because I, I heard God. You know, and I started to question, why will anybody not want to hear God? Why will anybody not want to follow the voice of God? Why will anybody know the will of God and go in a different direction? And I was thinking so much about it. And, and, and the Holy Spirit, it was, it was able to help me to describe a feeling I've had for months. A few people who've been talking to me, I've, I've said it to you one-on-one -on -one when we talk. Okay, the problem of this generation. And this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, our generation is plagued with selfism. Pay, pay attention this morning. Our generation is plagued with selfism. The Collins English Dictionary defines that as an emphasis on self. A selfish concentration on one's own interests. Or a, a philosophy based on them. So you see, there are some of us. Our outlook on life, our paradigm is selfish. Everything you do, you do for yourself. And you do to please you. Please, you need to understand that was not the way we were designed to live. Let's push it further this morning and let's read the words of the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 to verse 5. I'm going to read it first from the New Living Translation and then we'll read it again from the Message Bible. New Living Translation, it says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God. You see, as I read this, as I was reading and meditating, my mind just keeps going to social media. And the, the, the generation that we are now, and, and the way we trivialize the, the holy, the way we trample on the sacred, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful, they will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others, and have no self-control. They do what they like. Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of us are aware now that some people are beginning to sneak pedophilia into the same bracket of sexual orientation now? Mm, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Are we getting this? Because we are a generation, if, if, if I want it, I go for it. If it pleases me, it's okay. Since they will be cruel, and hate what is good. They will betray their friends. Be reckless. Be puffed up with pride. And love pleasure rather than God. Look at verse 5. Very crucial. Because we're in church this morning. It says, they will act religious. But they will reject the power that could make them godly. Okay? The Bible says, stay away. From people like that. Listen, Paul the Apostle in Galatians said that the things I preach I received from, by revelation from Jesus. So when he conceived this from Jesus and he documented it, he could not picture anybody reading his letter living like that. So he ended it by saying, stay away from people like that. He could not even fathom that you could be a person like that. Let's read it from the Message Bible. Don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, dog, unbending, slanderous, impulsively wild, savage. When I got to savage, I read Twitter. Hello? When he got to savage, I figured, oh, this is Twitter here. Cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags, addicted to lust and allergic to God. Now, you are going to see the paradox. These same people that are addicted to lust and allergic to God 
will make a show of religion. But behind the scenes, they are animals. <laughs> Stay clear of these people. Say to your neighbor, you can't afford to be one of them. You know, I looked at this generation and my mind went to the woman at the well. And it dawned on me that it is the most sinful people that argue about religion. Hello? That the people that fight and argue about religion the most are the most godless of human beings. Because you see, there's something about hearing the voice of God. I'm going to teach further on that on Wednesday. See, something about instructions, something about being led of God is peace. You cannot be hearing from God and not be a man or woman of peace. It's not possible. I don't want to digress. Okay? It's not possible for you to be hearing from God and not be a man or a woman of peace. Pastor Derwin Gray wrote in his blog on the 4th of May, 2015. Look at what he said. He said, as a fellow elder or pastor, I have I have concerns about the types of disciples our churches are producing. To me, it seems like we have a lot of selfism disguised as Christianity in churches. It's almost, it's almost as if Jesus exists to help keep our middle class American dream lives together. It's as if Jesus revolves around us and our purposes. Whereas the biblical gospel is clear about us centering our lives on Jesus and his redemptive purposes for humanity. Say to your neighbor for me, it's not about you. Now, this is what I'm trying to say. The reason why many of us don't hear from God, and a lot of times even when we hear from God, we don't live according to the leading of the Spirit, is because we are self-absorbed. As a matter of fact, we choose the churches we attend, the services we attend, based on how comfortable it is for us. The church close to my house. The time of the service that I wish to get there. I will serve in a unit that I feel like serving in. I will do what I feel like doing. If the temperature is too hot, I'm not going to go anymore. If there's no space for me to park my car, I'm not attending. If you won't answer my prayer in this church, I'll go to another one. If they won't accommodate me in that one, I will go to the next one. I like that man's preaching. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to go to church anymore. I will just sit down at home and pick, you know, a selection of the men of God that I want to listen to. Because as far as you are concerned, you think that God exists for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God said, listen, thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Lord God, I am the one that teaches you what is best for you. If you listen to my commands, your shalom will burst forth. Your righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the ability to appear before God without any sense of shame or contradiction or condemnation. You can show up before God's presence and you know that at his presence, mountains keep like realms. Our total deliverance is not in attending services as much as, you, look, I've got to access. But you see, many of us don't fellowship with him because we don't want to do what we think he's going to say. So we see we have a form of religion. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have a form of religion, but we deny God. We don't want something to do with him, but we want to identify with him in public. It has become trendy to be a Christian. It has become fashionable to be a Christian. When this movement started, it was a crime to be a Christian. Now we've made it so fashionable. We've made it so nice. We've built everything around us. And see, God is so gentle. God is so gracious. Instead of destroying us, he goes silent. So he leaves us to our whims. Are you listening to me? If you have not heard God in a long time, it's not because God does not want to speak to you, but it's because you really don't want to listen. But I didn't come to beat you over the head this morning. I didn't come to blame you. Because the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. He said our selfism is born out of deep wounds. He said we are a hurting generation. Because most of us are descendants of rebellion. Are you listening to me? How many of you, the degree to which you know God now, you look at the life of your parents and you're wondering, really, the gospel was this available and you guys did not respond? Next time you read Isaiah 48... It's not just you God is talking to. Our parents didn't listen. 
So their peace was messed up. Their righteousness was non-existent. Their descendants have been cut off from his presence. Did you come this morning? He said our selfism comes from a lack of trust. And therefore a need to protect ourselves. The average one of us is saying, nobody is looking out for me, so I better take care of myself. So everything we do is for selfish reasons. We have fallen for the oldest trick in the book. From the Garden of Eden to the temptation of the sons of Zebedee. The disciples of Jesus were jostling among themselves. Who is going to be the greatest in this kingdom? They were arguing amongst themselves. Then the Zebedee brothers took it to another level. They imported their mother to come talk to Jesus. They didn't come to make a donation. They said, look, in these things you guys are arranging. Jesus, I mean, how many of you, your parents went to school to fix something for you? You are the one I'm talking about. Some people listening to me, you didn't write jam like that. You went anywhere you wanted because somebody was willing to pay, somebody was willing to mess up the system just to get you ahead, just to show in the society that my child is making progress. So the sons of Zebedee, the mother came and said, look, let one sit at your right, let one sit at your left. And Jesus looked at them and said, you don't even know what you're talking about. Because as far as you're concerned, you can see what's a need for you. And he said to them, can you drink the cup I'm about to drink? They said, we'll drink. He said, yes, you will drink. But drinking it does not guarantee your seat. Because it's not about you. Are you here? Those seats were hidden for some people. Hello? Those seats hidden for some people and there's nothing you can do to get their seats. The same thing, there's nothing they can do to get your spot. Amen. There's nothing they can do. Eve fell for the same temptation. The Bible says she looked at the fruit. And found it was desirous to the eyes. Okay? It was, it, was, it was desirable for making one wise. And in an instant, she forgot the God that gave her life. You know, it's always amazing how some of us say, it's my life, I can do what I like with it. But there was a time you were such a wee little baby, just touching your nostrils can take you out of here. Hello? See, and that's why my mother may not be as smart as I am, but I'm always going to treasure my mother. Because she would have just taken me out. Hello? How many of you feel like that once in a while with your kids? You know, amen? They say grandchildren are God's way of rewarding parents for not killing their teenagers. <laughs> Did you get that? If you would just hold on, that your crazy teenager would give you a grandchild. That would be your reward. But there's going to be a season where they're going to... And all of us were there. Where you felt like they don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're doing. I know I'm, I, I, I can do what I like with my life. Nobody can tell me. And you see, we carry that attitude. It's not really that we are, we are rebellious. It's because we were hurt. People who were supposed to watch out for us did not watch out for us. We are the Mephibosheth generation. Some of us thought they were helping, but they damaged us in the process. We have become that generation. If I don't look out for myself, nobody will look out for me. And the moment you are about yourself, God goes silent. Will I do this thing without telling my servant Abraham, seeing that it will teach his children and his children's children to know the Lord? Joseph said, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. To accomplish the purpose that he is accomplishing today, the saving of so many lives, Joseph finally figured out it was never about me all the while. The coat of many colors, not about you. Amen? Some of us are sleeping, sitting here this morning privileged, you're blessed, Simply because you were born to somebody. God saw to it that you were born to the person you were born to because of your purpose. It's not about you. Hallelujah. It's not about you. It's not about you. Listen, if we can make this switch, if we can make this adjustment, God will break out all over us. Look, God wants to deal with me, but he doesn't want to do it because of me. God has a plan. Amen? What's the way forward? God said I should tell you. Replace selfism with surrender. And replace your pride with purpose. Realize that you are not the mission. You are only a piece in God's puzzle. And that God loves you. God has a plan for your life. And God will do for you better than you can ever do for yourself. Listen, you have to put your trust in God. And stop looking out for yourself. Amen? See, because the voice of God makes all the difference. We talked about that on Wednesday. It makes all the difference. If only you would hear me. He said, your peace 
Hallelujah. See, some of us right now, our life is topsy-turvy, not because of the devil. I'm, I'm going to show you that in a moment. Some people think devil is on their case. Some of us, it's not devil that is fighting you, it's God. And I'll prove it to you from scripture. Amen. He said, replace selfism with surrender. And replace your pride with purpose. This is the essence of my message. You need to come to that point. It is God who gave me this life. And he has a reason for it. Watch this. I am not the only one in his plan. So the reason why God is not happy with some of us and is not speaking is because you're messing up the plan. Because the plan is not about you. The plan is, imagine if Joseph slept with Potiphar's wife. It's not about you, guy. Hello? Imagine if I commit fraud now and I'm put in prison. What would happen to my son? I'm not talking about school fees. I'm talking about the father figure. Because some of us men, we don't know our purpose. Your purpose is not to pay bills. Your purpose is to stand. Your son needs to wake up every morning and see a man. Your daughter needs to wake up every morning and see a man. Full stop. You know, some of us parents, we try to hide what we're going through from our kids. And you forget they are more intuitive when they are younger. They pick all these things. They know when you're broke. So stop pretending. They just want to see you strong. Hallelujah. They want to see you pray to God when there's nothing in the pot for dinner. That is how they are going to learn to put their faith in God. Some of us, we rob them of all of those experiences and we take off. Because you're thinking about yourself. Hello? Look at the way he talked to me. Look at the way he's behaving. In short, I'm done. You pack everything up and go. And pick up somebody else who don't know your history. And call yourself a man. Amen. Say to your neighbor for me, trust God with your life. I'm telling you the truth. God has a plan. If we would align with that plan, the first manifestation is peace. Hello, peace. Then he said righteousness. And then he said your descendants will inherit. Their name will not be. So it's not about you. And listen to me, some of us are fighting our daddy's devils. If we don't fight these battles, it's going to be mayhem on our children. So you need to stand guard. And the first thing you need to do is what? Is to trust God with your life. Amen? Trust God with your life. Trust God with your future. Let God know, I have faith in you. Not the kind of faith we talk about in church and then Monday to Friday, I cut corners because I'm going to help myself. I trust you with my life. Amen? Listen, let me say this to you. I said it in one midweek service. Not so many of us were here. Listen. There are some of us who have been called by God for special assignments. I'm a pastor, so I'm sworn to secrecy. But sometimes I wish I could tell people stories. Okay? About situations and about people that you would have said, this is the end, or there's no way out of here. And just by trusting God with their destinies, some of these people are people you envy today. And the only thing they did right was they got to a point and they learned to surrender. Amen? Just, just put your life in his hands. Look at what the Bible says. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. I'm going to make you do your quiet time this morning. Message translation. It says, If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God but didn't think, it so, didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the, to the advantages of the status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, the crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever. 
because of that obedience. Say to your neighbor for me, you shall be lifted. Tell another person, you shall be lifted. But listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, the only way to be lifted is the way of obedience. And when I say obedience, I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about you being sensitive enough and hearing what God will have you do. Do you understand? And for all of us listening to me, I don't know what God has been trying to tell you. And God is saying, trust me. I have, I have, I've got your back. I will lift you. But allow me to lift you my way and my time. And stop trying to skim your way to the front. I'm going to show you the danger of that. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Let's read it from the Amplified Bible. It says, we are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things, somebody say all things. Come on, say it one more time. All things work together and are fitting into a plan for good. To and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Did you get that? God says, when you embrace my purpose for you, I will work out everything in your favor. Amen? Everything in your favor. Everything in your favor. Even when people work evil against you, God says, I will work it out. That is, if God is a partner in your labor. How does God partner in your labor? God says, when you embrace my purpose. Amen? When you embrace my purpose. You know, we've been talking about hearing from God. Some of us are not even interested in hearing from God. Why? Because we don't want to do with our lives what God will have us do with our lives. There are some people listening to me right now. You've sensed a call into ministry and you've been fighting it with professionalism. You've been rising on the job and everybody is, you know, respecting you. Everybody is saying you're moving up, you're moving on. But you know what you are running away from. The next time they mention the name Jonah. Answer. Hallelujah. This is the final thing he told me to tell you. And this is scary. God said, until you surrender, you are not safe. Pay attention to this one. He said, until you surrender, you are not safe. What does it mean to surrender? Until you embrace God's purpose for your life. You know why? Because God opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. I told you, stop praying for grace. This is how to Access grace. Humble yourself. See, humility is not the same thing as humiliation. To humble yourself is not to become docile, to become subservient. No. To humble yourself simply means to align yourself to the purpose of God for you. A good example of that in the Bible was the baptism of Jesus. John the Baptist said what? The person coming is greater than I am. I'm not worthy to untie his shoes. When Jesus showed up, John said, I cannot baptize you. You are the one that should baptize me. Jesus did not dispute that fact. But Jesus said, but let us do it this way to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, what God has written, the way God said it should be done, let us do it that way. There was no manifestation until he humbled himself. Are you listening to me? Please let all the women listen to me. You can't be a child of God and label yourself feminist. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he will lift you. This idea of you went to school, I went to school. You can speak English, I can speak English. You have your money, I have my money. You will be prosperous without grace. You will succeed but without grace. And the Bible says God resists the proud. He does not ignore that's why I said, some people think the devil is the one fighting them. A lot of people don't know that it's God. Because we refuse to what? To humble ourselves. I said it on Wednesday. So many people have made a friend of their mentors. Because we left secondary school before him. But there's something God has given him to teach you. If you would align yourself. If you're listening to me this morning, you have somebody in your office and you are rebellious. Because you are older than the person, because the person came after you, and you are the source of trouble where you walk. God will resist you. Ah, Pastor, why are you cursing us this morning? It's in the Bible. First Peter chapter 5. I didn't see this one until very recently. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5 to 8. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. Now look at the next line, because we skipped this one. He now said, 
all of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Did you get that? Surface. If he's older than you, regardless of what you know, submit yourself. Are you getting this? If he's younger than you are, all of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Because once in a while, God will ask Joseph to lead the family. Please, you need to understand, even for Jews, the firstborn is not the first child. Do you understand? When you hear the firstborn, the, the, the blessing of the firstborn, it's not about the first one to be born. As they were all growing together, the father looks at the most promising. The one that has taken his DNA, the one that has the capacity to lead, is the one who will give the blessing of the firstborn. If not, everybody is going down. And this generation will take out our firstborns. We envy them. We don't care whether we have the capacity as long as I'm the one in charge. And I've said this one before. If you cannot lead the team and you are praying to God to promote you, he won't answer your prayer. You know the reason why? For God so loved the world. Hello? You understand what I'm saying? The best of us should lead the rest of us. The wise amongst us promotes the best of us. Because God will give grace to the humble. Look at what the Bible says. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Verse 7, cast all your cares on him or your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Verse 8, we used to stop there and I think that was the problem. But let's read on. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And when we were in the series, Living in Victory, I told you that the devil is not a lion, so he cannot divorce. But why is he looking for who to devour? The Holy Spirit said to me, the devil will devour the person God opposes. Humility is not just aligning yourself with the purpose of God. Humility is your protection. Hello? So the devil goes around like a running lion. He's looking for the proud. Why? Because God opposes the proud. He saw Job. He said, I can't attack Job. You have a hedge around him. But the Bible says God opposes the proud. So God said, I should tell you, until you surrender, you are not safe. God opposes the proud. The devil targets the proud. And when the devil is on your case and God is not to your rescue, you are done for. Are you here tonight? Or rather this morning? God opposes the proud. I never saw it that way. Amen? I never saw it that way. You are trying to do stuff. Nothing is working. Look into your life. If there's any area of conflict, if there's no peace in your life, it means you are disobedient one way or the other. And listen, we are adults. It's not something you do in a moment. Some of us, it's in our marriage. Some of us, it's in church. Some of us, it's on the job. But your peace, your peace is not perfect. You are not at peace. You know, the Bible talks about follow peace with all men. The key to following peace with all men is humility. I taught you that in the first service. He that asks the questions controls the relationship. Because the moment you are the one asking questions, you have assumed the position of the one who does not know. Did you get that now? You have assumed. It's amazing how that some of the people I respect the most, I am always observant when other people are talking, the way they are in rapt attention. Are you getting this? Some of us, there's a lot God wants to teach you. You know, he said something in 1 I mean, John chapter 2. He said, he said, you have an unction from the Holy One. He says, you know all things. The reason why a lot of us, you're wondering, if I'm supposed to know all things, how come I'm making mistakes? I mean, how come I'm, I'm, I'm not making a headway? Because, you see, God wants to teach you, but a lot of times he uses people. And if you are not humble, humble people maintain decorum. So they don't talk out of order. Did you get that now? A lot of the people that God wants to use to teach you, they are not talking because you have not taken the posture of a student. Humility. Some of us husbands, we need to humble ourselves. Because some of the things God wants to teach us is in the voice of our daughters, of our sons, of your employees. Amen? Some of us, our wives. There's no greater trap than that. Because women are intuitive. Men are logical. 
the moment she's not making sense, you shut her up. And thus, thus said the Lord. But if we clothe ourselves with humility, our lives will not remain the same. On Wednesday, we're going to continue talking about how to hear from God. But what we've done this morning is to show you how to take a posture to always hear from God. Ladies and gentlemen, our lives will be so easy if at every crucial turn, you can hear God. Amen? You can hear God. Should I go? Should I not go? It will tell you, go. Should I stay? Should I not stay? It will tell you, don't stay. Where would Joseph, where could he have read? Take the child and go to Egypt. Amen? If you were Joseph, would you have married Mary? All the entrepreneurs, listen to me. You know how business, how your business will move to another level. If God can do your background checks for you. Because there are people that appear sane. There are people that appear like the real deal. And yet the Holy Spirit will tell you, not that guy. Not that guy. Not that guy. Not that person. Amen. I want us to pray a prayer of surrender this morning. Let's rise up and up. Yes, yes.